So this question is a diagram question. You're provided this graph that's here. Just pay attention to the shape of the graph. There really aren't any specific points that we know as of right now. I do see this y-intercept there, which I don't know the value of yet. I also see this x-intercept here, which I also don't know the value of. So let's read the question. So it says the function, so I'm like, I like to write down equations when I see them. So f of x is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus x minus 11 fourths is graphed in the xy plane above, right? So the shape of this graph is controlled by this function here. If k is a constant such that the equation f of x equals k has three real solutions. Okay, so real solutions. So what does that mean? Real solutions when it comes to graphs, and a lot of students don't know this, but real solutions when it comes to graphs literally just means x-intercepts. Right? Real solutions are y equals 0. Okay, so very literally, they are just x-intercepts. So right now, this graph only has one real solution, as is. But somehow we get this f of x equals k business, k being constant. Which of the following could be the value of k? Okay, then we have all these options for k. So what's the connection between these two things? Well, they both say f of x. Anytime I see that, I think substitution, right? So I could rewrite this as x cubed minus x squared minus x minus 11 fourths is equal to k. And in doing so, I would want to subtract k from both sides to make it equal to zero. So x cubed minus x squared minus x minus 11 fourths minus k equals zero. And this would help me to find, again, the three real solutions, which are the x-intercepts, right? So we can use math. I can just go with plugging in answers, right? So it's a strategy I can use here, PIA, plug in answers, to see which one of those answer choices gets me a factored form of this polynomial that has three real solutions. Or, which I prefer because why did they give me this big graph in the first place if I'm not going to use it? Or I can think about it from a visual standpoint, which is the x-intercepts. So let's think about it visually. So this graph, I'm going to subtract k from the current y-intercept, so negative 11 fourths, which is here, right? So that's basically negative 2.75. If, if you throw negative 11 fourths in your calculator, you'll see that that's negative 2.75. Somehow, this negative k here, is going to move the graph, right? And it can only move it up or down. It's going to shift the y-intercept to the point where this graph now has three x-intercepts, right? Three real solutions. Well, how does that happen? Well, it can't shift it down, right? We can't go away from the x-axis, which means that answer choice A and B are automatically crossed out. B is crossed out because if K is zero, the graph doesn't change at all, right? And we already know it doesn't have three x-intercepts. If k equals 2, which is answer choice A, then that would be a negative 11 fourths minus 2. That would be shifting it down, right? That makes it even more negative. It makes the y-intercept go down two units. So that can't be it. We need to go up. So I like choices C and D because at least they make, um, they, they shift this up. So if I were to choose, so looking at choice C, it would shift the graph up two units. So this would be one unit, right? So from there to there. Another one unit for B to here to here. So if I move that up, I'd have, this would be like my new y-intercept. And it looks like it goes up just slightly to the left before going down. And then it goes down to the right, right? And then goes back up. So even that, I still only have the one x-intercept. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll use a different color now. For choice, so I don't like choice C, right? It's not it's not shifting it up enough. Choice D shifts us up three units. So I go up another unit. So basically put me right here for my new y-intercept. Right? That'd be my third space up. And again, just like before, to the left, I go up a little bit and then down. So there gives me a x-intercept. And on the right, I go down quite a bit and then up. And there goes my second and third 
x-intercept, and therefore, I erased, I did too much. <laughs> therefore, D is the best answer here from a visual standpoint, right? From this x-intercept standpoint. Of course, you can do the math here. You can say, well, when I plug in D minus x, negative 11 fourths, so I'll just do the math here, negative 11 fourths minus 3 over 1. Well, I want to have a common denominator, so it becomes negative 11 fourths minus 12 fourths. This is negative, negative, so it becomes plus 12 fourths. And that becomes positive 1 fourth, so it becomes positive 1 fourth. So now my new y-intercept is at positive 1 fourth. And again, you can throw this into a graphing calculator. And you'll see that you get three x-intercepts. If not, we could factor this. I don't want to take the time to factor this because I think if you know how to do that, you most likely got this question right. Um, this video is for people who missed this question. Um, so if you do know how to factor from this stage and maybe there's something else that went on in the setup, by all means, factor this and you'll see that you get three solutions. We do expect to get three solutions because uh, this is a, a the, the highest power here is three. Um, but I really like this idea of, of using the visual, right? Why else would they give us this graph? So think about that. Why else would this graph be here if it weren't for the point that seeing that by shifting it up by three units, we end up with three real solutions, right? Three x-intercepts. We could really get there very quickly if we accept that fact.